What's going on guys? It's your boy DPJ now. The stream from earlier today, Deej, Mark and Tyson covered a shitload of new information from the Taken King. Now if you did miss the stream, I will link the whole thing in the video description if you do want to check it out. Now I could make 30, 40, 50 videos spamming your sub boxes with the amount of information from this stream, but I've decided to put it all into one video. Now if you guys do enjoy the video at the end if you could leave a like I would appreciate the support and basically pinpointing aspects of the stream which I found interesting and were new information to me they started off the stream basically discussing light score which we all know plenty about so I'm going to skip this and move straight on to the class items which I don't know much about now class items now have abilities which you can switch up some offer increases in intellect but then can be switched to offer increased strength but as I understand it won't be one or the other for example if you have a class item which has mods which offer increased strength which can be switched up to increased intellect the item will still offer intellect if strength is selected but you will just get a boost in strength depending on the setup you use and need this can come in very handy now class items also give you buffs to upgrade weapons faster normally a class item with a taken king will offer two types of weapons to upgrade faster but you can only choose one buff at a time for example if like the class item on screen your class item has increases the upgrade rate of scout rifles and increases the upgrade rate of machine guns you have to choose one and wouldn't get a buff to upgrade both faster at the same time now class items also offer increased reputation gains which I'm guessing will be different depending on where and when you get these class items now moving on we got more info on the abilities gold shells offer besides defense we see that the blue rare gold shells offer mods that can detect and mark nearby materials now moving on we then get an insight into the emblems collection vault this is amazing and as I thought if you are cluttered with emblems and want to remove some to make up space you can safely do so as this keeps track of all of the emblems you have unlocked and if you later on down the line want to rock that Crotus end emblem you can just come back to this vault and equip it it's as simple as that now it's this sort of thing I absolutely love working towards and getting that whole collection I mean I remember way back in the day with Modern Warfare 2 they had a system where you had to basically unlock titles and it was something I really love to do and it's great to see that being incorporated into the Taken King now notice at the top it says there are four collection pages so there is a shitload of emblems for us to collect he also says that shaders and ships and vehicles also get their own collection vaults which is going to be great considering the amount of ships there are in this game now moving on they mention and confirm that if you accept allegiance with a faction like new monarchy future war Cult, or dead orbit when you earn that crucible rep or vanguard rep you will now earn your faction rep too as before if you wore a faction class item and played crucible or played strikes you would only earn faction rep now you'll still get Vanguard and Crucible rep and still earn that faction rep at the same time. We then get a closer look at a new piece of legendary armor supplied by New Monarchy. The first thing I noticed were the perks in the first skill tree, offering either increased intellect or discipline. The second skill tree will offer increased ammunition you can carry on certain weapons. Now I'm guessing these setup of perks will be very similar across most chest armors, but the best and most interesting part Part of this armor is the third skill tree we see this chest has increased recovery when hit by solar damage and the other mod is increased armor when using a solar based subclass ie sunsinger gunslinger and the hammer of soul although we don't see they do mention another perk that will be available on other chest armors it's basically a perk that reduces damage from certain burn types when a burn school is active via a nightfall which sounds pretty epic we then see that factions will have material exchanges so if you are stacked up on armor materials you can exchange for a certain amount of reputation although they don't state how much rep you will get for the exchange we then get a look at the weapons and we see the new monarchy Suros auto rifle which is called the righteous seven although i first thought before watching this stream that you'll get a faction weapon shader which can be applied to foundry weapons it seems as though 
that ain't the case and I apologize if I got any of you guys hopes up. Foundries just make certain weapons for certain factions. They then go on to state that factions will also offer quests which will be pretty cool. They also mention as well that faction packages are much improved. No single morts of light, absolutely epic. They guarantee at least one legendary from a package with an increased chance of obtaining that shader or ship you can't get. Also decreasing the chance of duplicates. Moving on we get a look at what Lord Shax has to offer and upon first inspection of Lord Shax we get a quest which I'm guessing will come along quite often. We then get to see how Lord Shax has crucible bounties for you to complete. These refresh every single week. You can see there are six bounties if you complete the first five, you get the sixth bounty, which they state has amazing rewards, equivalent to that of the Nightfalls. They then go on to state some interesting info on legendary marks and how they are player-wide, like Glimmer, so they can basically be used across all of your characters. They also mention you do not have any limit on how many you can earn in a week. Yes, you can only hold 200 at a time, but if you spend them 200, you can go back out within the same week and earn another 200 legendary marks. They state as well that your current Vanguard and Crucible marks that you will own when you're taking King Drops on the 15th of September will change into commendations which you can use to rank up your faction. We then see the Crucible Quartermaster who also has bounties for us to complete. We then get to see the exotic blueprint terminals which are located in the Vanguard room and it seems as though weapons and armors have different vaults. They then state what I stated in a previous video of how these exotic vaults will always have exotics you have unlocked. Even if accidentally deleted you can go back here and pick it straight back up. They then go on to talk about your year 1 and year 2 exotics. They use a light beyond nemesis as an example to demonstrate the differences between year 1 and year 2 exotics. Basically, the Light Beyond Nemesis has a specific perk which makes it an exotic armor. This perk will be the difference from Year 1 and Year 2 exotics. A Year 2 version of the Light Beyond Nemesis will have its main perk which is Keeper of the Pack active as soon as you require it. So it's active without you even leveling it up. Now your Year 1 exotics will have a lower defense and upgrading it will cost 125 legendary marks but you do get that upgraded defense. These exotics as well offer new perks so it's definitely worth the upgrade. They then go over to the exotic weapon blueprints vault and like the armors some not all will be available to upgrade. Like armors though if you accidentally dismantle an exotic weapon you can come here and grab it right from this vault. Although it does cost an exotic shard and 2500 glimmer. We then get a look at their year 2 upgraded Suros regime which looks absolutely incredible. To acquire it you will need the year 1 Suros and it will cost you 150 legendary marks. You can see that it has new perks like this one called spinning up. The longer the weapon is fired the faster it fires. Shame we didn't get a look at the upgraded Red Death and Last Word. Moving on, we then get to see the new improved Cryptarch who will be selling legendary engrams which will cost you 60 legendary marks. We then get a look at the gunsmith. The first thing we see are field test weapons which you can acquire for free and like weapon bounties which once equipped and have steps completed you earn rep for the gunsmith. Once you hit rank 1 with the gunsmith you are able to select an arms day package. What these do is basically give you a bounty in which you have to complete via arms day from Wednesday to the following Wednesday. Once completed you are able to come back to the gunsmith and collect your reward. Arms day refreshes every Wednesday. We then get a demonstration of infusing weapons. You can only infuse your year 2 weapons and armors and they must be legendary or exotic. So what is infusing? Say you have a legendary weapon you love but it's become a little weak and you do have more powerful weapons but they just ain't what you want. You can infuse the weapon you don't want into the one you love giving it a higher attack and make it relevant again. It ain't free, it will cost you 250 glimmer, 10 weapon parts, 1 more of light and 3 legendary marks plus I believe the weapon you don't want which you choose to infuse into the weapon you love. This also works with armors too. We then 
get to see our new vault space and this is amazing basically doubling slots for weapons and armors absolutely insane notice the sword as well can't wait to see more on that but guys that is it the stream ends with a little dance with the new dance moves but absolutely plenty of information to talk about let me know your opinion down below and anything i've covered in this video if you have any questions let me know them too thanks for stopping by as always if you could drop a like i would appreciate the support and peace out until next time peace Get it right.